What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is Darian with Darian the Dev and in this video we're going to be talking about what a SWOT analysis is and why it matters to you as a developer. Alright guys, so before we jump into the video, if you're new here to the channel, I help non-technical people get into coding or technology in general and we cover everything from tech startups to coding and entrepreneurship on this channel so if that's what you're into make sure you like share subscribe it really helps me stay motivated keep making this content for you guys and we're gonna go ahead and jump into this video about SWOT analysis so SWOT stands for strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats and when we talk about these four categories this is mainly um, things that are used in business or I wouldn't even say startups, it just a lot of companies in general use SWOT analysis to kind of just determine how they should move forward with a certain strategy or determine if something is working or not, or even to determine their competitive advantage. And that's what I want to talk to you guys about in terms of why SWOT analysis is relevant to us as developers. We can use SWOT analysis in a lot of different areas of just life. It doesn't have to just be business or entrepreneurship. And I wanted to show you guys by showing you an example of SWOT analysis and using it and applying it to determine your competitive advantage as a developer. If I asked you what makes you stand out from every other bootcamp graduate out there or every other free code camper that's on the internet or every other person taking Code Academy, what would you say? Would it be that you have projects built? Are you a master at JavaScript or are you a master at CSS? Is that what you're really good at? Like what would make me think that you have a skill or a trait that I would need to hire you for? So basically in a pile full of applications of people who are all bootcamp graduates are on the same level, have used all the same resources as you on the internet online, how do you stand out from that same group of people that are using those same exact resources and pretty much learn all the same stuff that you are learning? And I think that's where competitive advantage comes into play because companies do this all the time, right? Startups are doing this every single day. They're thinking about competitive advantage. What makes our product or our business special compared to everyone else that's doing the same or similar things to what we're doing or offering the same or similar services as to what we're offering? So I think you have to ask yourself as a developer, while you guys are either teaching yourself online or going through a coding bootcamp or you just recently graduated coding bootcamp, as you are refining your resume and going to these technical interviews, you're going to have to figure out what sets you apart and how you can leverage that to either get bigger salaries or to get better jobs, uh, bigger job titles, promotions, like all types of things come from understanding what value you actually bring to the table for an employer, for a company. And I think SWOT analysis is a great way for us to break that down. So let's go ahead and jump over to Trello and let's check out how we can apply this to ourselves as a developer. So I'm gonna actually use myself as an example right here. If I am comparing myself to another similar level developer as myself, so a bootcamp graduate, let's say anywhere between two to three years of experience or let's say one to three years of experience let's say they have a, a job as well let's say they've had one job in the industry all right so those would be our three criteria right there how do i set myself apart from those people so strengths i'll say that you know at least at my job from what i noticed not a lot of developers know selenium framework which is automated front-end testing and that's for another video if you guys don't know what that is but in my opinion i think that's a strength because I'm the only dev on my team at work that actually writes automation using Selenium. And there's, to my knowledge, not many other, if any other developers at my job to even know Selenium at all. And I learned from a great QA of mine that's on my team. So to be honest, um, I'm not gonna take all the credit for it, but I did seek it out. I knew that he was really skilled at that. And I went and I sought that skill from him and I sat and learned with him. And then I started taking what he was teaching me and writing test cases for my own code and slowly we started writing stuff for the whole team and that's kind of um, became a strength slowly for me so I'm gonna put that down as one of my strengths is um, Selenium automation. Another strength that I have as a developer is that I work in a proprietary XML framework you guys so uh, I'll throw some pictures or something of some XML up here on the screen but like 
Yeah, it's a it's it's not it's it's kind of like uh, JSON in a way. It's not a very pretty uh, language to work with, but it's something that I've I've been working with for over seven months straight now. And um, yeah, I mean, it's I, I'm not gonna say it's the the craziest, most useful thing to know in the world of software development, but at the same time, it's something I've spent a lot of time with that a lot of other developers probably don't have the same level of comfort as I do with uh, just working with XML in general, working and coding in Notepad++ with no syntax highlighting and no um, IntelliSense or anything like that. So it takes a special kind of sauce to figure out how to navigate through certain things with really big like two or three thousand line XML files. So I'm gonna put that down as another one of my strengths. Uh, I can say things here like uh, my soft skills, and I'll say slash communication because a lot of people, sometimes you can be working on a team with other people who are really talented as developers, but they might not necessarily be the most friendly or the easiest people to talk to or communicate their ideas with and back and forth with. So, um, you know, so you can, you know, put whatever you want here basically, but whatever you notice that sets you apart or are things that you know that you're good at that other people might struggle with a little bit more those are your strengths that is part of what makes you special that is what makes you stand out so another strength that i have is that i'm learning docker i'm not going to say that i know it completely but i've used it in a few projects and i really enjoy it it really helps manage dependencies really well especially when you're working on a project with multiple people um especially when uh, i'm using like ruby and rails or react it is really good because both of those like both of those languages have a lot of dependencies involved in them. Ruby with gems, React with all these libraries and stuff. So Docker has been incredible for working with other people on projects and not having to worry about updating our local machines and our, our local project all the time. So again, like that is something that I would consider a strength, even though I'm not the best at Docker. I have done it in projects. I've used it. I know enough to actually create containers and I can actually spin them up and deploy them to Heroku and I know how to create Docker Compose files and configure, you know, all this stuff to actually get up and running on a project with other people that I can deploy to GitHub and other people can pull it down and they can build the same exact environment on their computer. And, you know, that in itself is uh, something that not every dev or many devs at all at my job know how to do and this comes from just side projects and just doing stuff in my free time so again guys like the little things you guys do in your free time side projects the things you learn can clearly translate into strengths on your SWOT analysis as a developer when you go into these job interviews sell yourself or whatever the case may be so let's jump into some weaknesses so for sure I would say I would say uh, my sequel is definitely a weakness of mine um, specifically like stored procedures, parameterized tables and like triggers, a lot of things like that. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to say that I don't know them, but they're definitely something I struggle with. So that is why I would, I would put that down as one of my weaknesses. Definitely. Another weakness of mine, I would say would be like, uh, unit testing or integration testing. Um, and again, I would say, because a lot of the times when I'm working, uh, I don't, necessarily have to do unit tests on xml files so it's not something that i actually have to write a ton of unit tests so again it's not something that i don't know how to do it's not something that i just don't know completely but if somebody asked me this in a job interview i would basically have to admit that it's not something i'm very good at so again that is where i would go ahead and say hey like I, I, at least you know how to angle and position certain things that you're aware are your weaknesses um, and you're, you know, and you can also improve on these things. So if you know that these things are weaknesses, then you also know your areas of improvement and you can spin the weakness area into a positive. Okay, so now we're moving on to the opportunities category. So in opportunities, right, these are ways you can look at your strengths and figure out how you can leverage that in opportunities. So now we're going to take our strengths and figure out, you know, what value can that provide the person that, you know, we could be potentially talking to. So for Selenium, you know, write, write a team automation library with Selenium. So that's something I'm working on right now. So the methods I'm actually writing with my Selenium testing right now can actually be used as a library by my QA to actually test other parts of our system. So 
that way, um, if I go to another company or something like that, I can speak to that experience and say, hey, like whatever team I'm on, I could be a developer, but I can also assist with kind of writing some automated Selenium tests and things like that. So that then turns into an opportunity for any company that doesn't currently have that. You know, with Docker, you know, you can say, you know, you can say help improve, you know, the company deployment standards or modernize deployment standards. So these are actionable things that your skills actually translate into real tangible value for whoever is about to hire you or whoever you're talking to again for partnerships, business collabs, whatever the case may be. Even think of this as a uh, freelance opportunities. So if you're trying to sell yourself as a freelance hire or a contract worker for someone, what are your strengths? What are you good at? You know, can you articulate that? And what are your strengths and why are they important to the person who's about to hire you? Because ultimately, if they're not important to that person, they have no reason to hire you, right? So you have to figure out how to take what you're good at, articulate that, but then also articulate why that's a benefit for the person who's going to hire you. All right, so the last thing is the threats category. And that was pretty straightforward. We just want to identify anything that could pretty much hurt our chances of getting hired as an employee, as a remote dev, as, you know, uh, whatever, contract worker, whatever your goal is, anything that could stop, harm, or hinder you from getting to that goal could be identified as a threat. Some threats to us as you know, newer developers or me as newer developer, you know, two to three years experience, came out of a boot camp. Threats to me are more experienced devs. More work experience, more industry experience. In my case, I work at a mortgage company. So if somebody comes in and they're a developer, even if we have the same amount of time as a developer the same amount of experience as a developer if they come in with five years of mortgage knowledge at a mortgage company again that could be a threat to me getting hired no matter how good i am as a dev if they know the, the business more than i do and they have you know similar or maybe not as strong technical skills the business might find them to be more of a benefit so that could be a threat to me so this is very different for everybody's situation, guys. I just really wanted to share this because I felt like it was an important topic that can help all of us kind of identify what makes us special and stand out in this field. A lot of people say that like the coding bootcamp, you know, and new dev whole scene is saturated and there's too many new developers out here who are just getting smashed through these boot camps and thrown into the workforce and they don't really know what they're doing and there's a lot of different stereotypes and biases that are out there floating around but i think if we take the time to do swot analysis and really understand where we need to improve where we're already good how we can sell those things that we're good at and provide value and then also identify and eliminate any threats that are in our ways guys there's no way that we won't be successful if you guys think about going to a coding bootcamp make sure you stop and check out my free intro to coding bootcamp course down in the description section below guys at darian the dev dot it has everything that i wish i knew going into my first week of coding bootcamp so you guys will be very well prepared to do well on that again this is darian with darian the dev and i'll see you guys in the next video all right peace